Fighting games are very often broken down into two sub-games, the punish game and the neutral game. For the uninitiated, the neutral game is the intricate dance that leads up to that first opening, and the punish game is converting off that one opportunity. And while punish flowcharts can be memorized, which is perfect for players with two brain cells like myself, the neutral game has always been a lot harder to conceptualize. There's so many terms people throw out, like undershooting, whiff punishing, and stage control, that are all interrelated in weird quirky ways, and it doesn't help that there's 26 characters that all have different movesets that can be performed at various spacings and timings. So, for the purposes of this video, I'd like to unveil what we'll call 2IQ Melee, which is a pure version of the game for superior-minded gamers. In 2IQ Melee, there is only one character, and it is Fox, and there's only one stage, Final Destination. In this version, Fox is unable to do anything other than walk left, walk right, and press A, which will make Fox do his forward tilt. The frame data for this move is the same as in regular melee and has 5 startup frames, 4 active frames, and 18 frames of recovery afterwards. This version has no jumping, or blocking, or crazy movement mechanics, because those are locked behind paid DLC alongside cool skins. And for players who struggled with melee's original punish game, you'll be glad to hear that it is completely non-existent in this version of the game. If a player gets hit by an attack, they get sent to the Shadow Realm, never to be heard from again. So the question on all of our minds is then, what does the metagame of 2IQ Melee look like? I think it's helpful to start from the most naive strategy we can think of and go from there. So let's say you're playing against your little sibling who has come up with this Galaxy Brain flowchart. On any given frame, they'll walk forwards if you're out of range of their attack and attack if you're in range. And I know, this is stunning stuff. But even if we know this is what they do every game, how do we beat this strategy? I'll give you a second to think about it, and don't worry, the answer isn't anything revolving around them mis-executing or misjudging the range of their attack. Alright, got an answer? The hidden secret here is that there are these ifs in their game plan, which means that they are scanning the game state, reacting, and then executing based off of what they see. And our sibling, being a squishy meat bag of flesh and bones, is forced to spend approximately 250 milliseconds just simply reacting and processing what they see, which for a 60 frame per second game translates to a 15 frame delay. So when we say they'll attack us when we're in range, what we're actually saying is we'll get in range of their attack, they'll visually confirm this 15 frames later, then press the A button, and then their move will spend 5 frames in startup, and a full 20 frames after we've entered their attack range will get kicked in the face. And if you've seen how fast paced fighting games are, 20 frames or a third of a second is an eternity. So what we can do is walk in range of their attack, and then simply walk right out again. That dumb kid will get baited into throwing out their attack, and since we're actually not in range anymore, they'll miss and will be in lag for the full duration of their move, or 26 frames. And converting from here is pretty straightforward. We can react for 15 frames to them putting out their foot, press A and get our foot out in 5 more frames, and eviscerate them with 6 frames to spare. This is the essence of what the fighting game community calls whiff punishing, which is when we bait our opponent into throwing out an attack, and then punish them while they're recovering. You can imagine this crushing defeat has started our younger sibling on a grand supervillain arc, hellbent on getting revenge and then going on a rampage to tear through civilization. And now that they know that we're going to be whiff punishing their original game plan, is there anything they can do to adapt? Funnily enough, all they need to do is just hold forwards and continuously take space. And our whiff punishing strategy will look pretty silly as we walk ourselves into the corner, continuously expecting them to throw out a move even though they never will. And once we're in the corner, we've completely run out of space and become unable to walk backwards anymore. We're not guaranteed to get hit here, but corner pressure is its own thing and trust me we'll come back to this. But fortunately for us, the strategy of just walking forward and taking space loses to the strategy of just walking forwards if they're out of range of our attack and attacking if they're in range. And oh wait, that looks familiar. There is a core rock paper scissors going on in 2IQ melee of attacking, which loses to with punishing, which loses to taking space, which loses to attacking, and this is a central concept that transcends just 2IQ melee, but across all fighting games like Street Fighter, Tekken, and 1IQ melee. Sorry, I uh, couldn't help myself with that one. But it's a little more complicated than traditional rock paper scissors because the legs of the triangle are uneven. Specifically, let's talk about the risk and reward of each strategy. When you take space, you either lose to attacking and get hit, or you beat with punishing and you win space. When you attack, you either lose to whiff punishing and get hit, or if they took space, you land a hit. But when you whiff punish, you either lose space if they just walked forward, and if they attack, you get a free hit. This triangle is sort of imbalanced in favor of whiff punishing, because it's the only option where getting outplayed doesn't result in us getting hit. And even nicer is the fact that pretty much any new player playing the game is going to walk forward and just blindly swing for the fences. And by adopting this strategy out of the gate, we end up beating players who haven't given much thought to fighting games. Taking a default stance of whiff punishing and neutral interactions forces an opponent to represent that they understand the concept of space, which can be weird and intangible to new players. I did promise to talk about corner pressure, and now that the grand rock paper scissors has been unveiled, we're ready. 
If we have no space, then we can't whiff punish because we physically can't walk backwards. And that means we're playing rock, paper, scissors, missing an option. And now that our opponent has us cornered, they have no reason to take space because they already own the entire stage. Here, I've mapped out the matchup chart of all the remaining options available to both players. And you can see how abysmal this is for us. We are essentially praying that we guess right, because in the best case scenario we gain some space back, and in the worst case scenario we just die. Our opponent is certainly not guaranteed to hit us, but we need to outplay them heavily just to reset the true neutral. Given that stages are pretty long, we can get away with losing with whiff punishing for quite some time before we end up in the corner. And although normal melee is very complicated, with characters who can overshoot heavily and can full hop and drift and blah blah who cares, Dashing backwards is super strong there too. But before we call it a day and pretend we've optimized the meta, there's one last top secret hidden dimension we need to talk about, which is the fact that you can actually circumvent the human reaction time by simply choosing not to react. In all the strategies we've talked about so far, we've talked about them in the lens of casually walking into range of our opponent's attack and then either attacking, walking backwards, or continuing the move forward. But if our opponent knows we're going to walk in range of their attack, there's no reason why they can't just preemptively throw out a hitbox as we're walking forward, timing it to come out with the moment we enter their range. And this introduces the concept of reading as opposed to reacting, where we make a direct call out on our opponent's movement. Here, we are defensively calling out an opponent moving forward, but we can also read aggressively, calling out our opponent's positioning by walking forwards for 10 frames and then attacking, which will still fit our attack within the 15 frame unreactable window. And this adds a whole new dimension to the game, because players suddenly need to respect the fact that their opponents might just decide to turn off their brains and YOLO all in at any point in time. Suddenly, we can't be so casual about dancing inside our opponent's effective range. <sighs> okay, deep breaths everyone, that was a lot, but now we're done with the mechanics of 2 IQ melee, and now we're at the fun part, which is how does all of this actually apply to games that don't just have 3 buttons? In complex games with lots of inputs, like normal melee, it can be easy to drown in tech skill and worry about individual mechanics and lose sight of the big picture, which is that the actions we take all combine to serve a larger purpose. When we play neutral, we should have in the back of our minds a general sense of what we're trying to accomplish. Like if we think we should be playing more preemptively, challenging our opponent's reactions or execution, or more reactively, using our movement to bait our opponent into doing something stupid first. Having a sense of these general themes, like taking space and with punishing, gives us the ability to categorize what we see our opponent is doing and come up with counterplay on the fly. Is our opponent randomly swinging at us? Might be good to read that they're entering our space with a preemptive walling aerial, or just temporarily give up space and punish them afterwards. Is our opponent just dashing back all the time? Could be a cool idea to just move forward non-committally, taking the space for free and just resetting to neutral, with the potential to corner them many interactions down the line. Is our opponent just holding forward and not doing anything? Uh, just hit them I guess? Fighting games are infinitely interesting because despite being simple on the surface, every move can serve a billion different intentions depending on the spacing and timing at which we use them. Even in 2 IQ Melee, we managed to create an entire metagame simply by switching up between preemptive and reactive timing and defensive and aggressive spacing. The next time you watch a top player set, pay attention to what intentions they prefer to represent as those are influenced by playstyle and character strengths and weaknesses. For instance, Zane will almost exclusively use Mars tools with either neutral drift or fading backwards, preemptively walling out when he thinks opponents will jump in. And he adds whiff punishing at the mix-up to make sure opponents can't hard read his aerial timing. By representing options that primarily dissuade opponents from running in, he forces his opponents to respect his space, and will slowly expand the Zane domain to the edge of the stage before converting into a kill. Meanwhile, Mango loves pushing forwards and will mix between taking space non-committally or attacking at a variety of different drifts because his game plan revolves around using his game sense and mechanics to bowl over opponents who don't have perfect defense. All of this is very much an oversimplification, but having a vocabulary of terms like whiff punishing, taking space, and walling is important for establishing a framework to play neutral with. And finally, if you wish you could watch 2 IQ Melee, then you're in luck, because it sort of already exists in the form of Footsies, a game that is also a pretty skeleton-like variant of traditional fighting games, although it does have blocking and more than one move. They ran a side tournament for it at EVO Japan, and it is pretty hilarious how much even the meta around this simplified game resembles fully-fledged fighting games. You could of course make the argument that this is because the players are experienced fighting game vets and are just playing habitually, but I also think it's because the concepts mentioned in this video are at the heart and soul of every fighting game. Thanks for watching. Hello, hello. It is officially 5.30 in the morning and I'm more than a little bit tired, but we made it and that's the important part. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hopefully another video will be out shortly. Um, if you have any ideas for scripts you'd like to see, please feel free to leave comments down below or whatever you feel like doing. We also have a Discord. Uh, it has a melee ladder and we just like shoot the shit about melee as well. So. Feel free to join. Yeah, peace.